corazón tener a mí You still hide it up your sleeve You want for something you can't name Just a memory photograph Oh, na, 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 na Na, 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 na We moved here in 1964. We then drove around when we were out here, and uh, we had looked out in Woodstock and out further, but we drove down here and we ran into the, uh, where, this, where City Hall is right now, mm -hmm. that was the old Gooch office. And we ran into a realtor, and he started showing us around to various homes that they were in our range that we could buy. And uh, we decided to take this house. And it was really a small bungalow at the time, you know, as most of the homes were. There, most of the homes out here then, with the exception of North Lake, were all lakefront property in previous times. North Lake was the first section that had really been built up. And the east side here was the oldest section and pretty well built up with small little homes. We moved in in uh, October of 1966. And uh, we had purchased the house in, over the telephone. Basically, we negotiated over the phone on Labor Day weekend of 1966. At one point, I rented a car and drove out the toll road until I got to Barrington Road and then drove north on Barrington Road until I decided I'd gone far enough and turned in by Gooch's office, which is now the Village Hall, and uh, drove around here and back through uh, Barrington. Uh, saw that Gooch had a Eloise Gooch had another office in uh, in Barrington, so I jotted the name and address down and went back to my motel in Southern California, in the Los Angeles area, and. Uh, wrote her a letter and said uh, we were interested in looking at houses out here. We'd be willing to buy a uh, three or four bedroom house and uh, in this area and be happy to pay as much as $32,000 for it. So the Gooch had a, a great laugh about this. Uh, that 32000 was just a, a tad under what the houses were selling for out here at the time. So that was the introduction to to Tower Lakes, anyhow. I was passing through Barrington, and I uh, had been to Tower, I'd been to Barrington before, because at college I dated a girl from Barrington for a little while, and so I came to visit her one time. And I remember liking Barrington, and I remember saying, you know, that's, that's not bad. So I was passing through Barrington after some sales calls, and I went stopped in a realty office, and I went, I gotta buy a house someplace. I was looking at Barrington. She, oh, see, she showed me, Three houses, two in Tower Lakes. I would, came back to the one we're living in now, and I said, I'll take it. And my wife had never seen it. And uh, literally, I, I signed the contract and said, I'll buy the house. And finally, my business partner said, John, you've never had Michelle here look at the house. I said, well, she'll be happy. And Michelle said, yeah, I'm, I'm fine. And uh, so finally, in May, I closed the end of May. In May of that year, at the end, in the middle of May, he, Buster said, you've got to get your wife out here to look at this. I mean, this isn't, I mean, she's got to look at the house before you actually close. So I said, all right, so I flew, because we were living in California. We just came back from Australia. We had just spent seven years in Australia. And uh, so she, she came back, and it was a lovely May Saturday afternoon. And I knew we could walk around the town. And so we parked our car around here and came walking through here and we saw two people out here imbibing. I thought, this isn't bad. And uh, we walked by and I said, I said, are you the Millers? And they said, no, uh, we're the Canes. Because I said, because I'd spoken, I'd spoken with uh, Jim Miller about sailing, because I knew they did some sailing out here. And I, I'd purchased a, a sailboat when I arrived. Well, I, I was gonna bring one. And, um, and I got to talking and we stopped in and that was three in the afternoon. I probably left at midnight. This is as far as we got. <laughs> <laughs> Hanging out with Joe and Sue. <laughs> and that was the beginning of it all. We talked about maybe we need to live in a more 
place closer to the city, not in the city, but closer to the city. So we started looking in Evanston. And by then, Michael was, I think, four, wasn't he? Yeah. And we found a beautiful home, old Victorian house, about a block from Lake Michigan. And we both loved it. And we decided we were going to make a good on it. And we drove home, and we pulled in our driveway. And it was one of the spectac spectacular Tower Lake sunsets. And we both said, forget it. At that time, we were just an association, and um, Cy Wagner was president of the association, and we had the vote to incorporate, and the primary reason for incorporation, as I recall, was so that we would be able to take advantage of the sales taxes that we could get as a municipality. But at the time, we incorporated, and we were all part of talking about this, we incorporated it as such that we did not include the lake. We kept that as a separate entity because had that been part of the village, everything would have been open to the public. So we, the, found, the association was kept private for that purpose alone. And I think everybody here who, who lives here should really appreciate that fact. So there was very little opposition to, to incorporation. Um, Prior to incorporation, we had, we were a little bit, we were only 100 people, 100 homes out here when we moved out here. And um, we had a, a, a caretaker, and the caretaker picked up the garbage, he cut all the grass of all the properties, he, uh, he basically took care of everything. He plowed, he was everything, and he lived in a little house over there on, on uh, Roberts Road. He later, once we incorporated, <coughs> excuse me, he later became the first owner, owner of that gas uh, or that repair shop that's right there on 59. His name My was, uh, his, yeah, and he was the first owner there. He had a little gas station and a repair shop. His first name was Ken, but I don't remember his last name. One of the things that's changed in Tower Lakes is you have air conditioning now, which you didn't have before. I was working, uh, when I was in town, I would work over in Skokie initially and then in, in Northbrook. And uh, so you get back on a hot, hot night. And so our, our standard thing with our little kids was to change into swimsuits and then swim across to the beach, swim, which you can't do now with the lily pads. So that would be a, a, a bummer. But the, uh, uh, we, we did that routinely. Uh, they still had the, you know, the swim lessons for kids, but when we moved in, our daughter was two, and so she would hang either on my neck or my wife's neck when we would swim across the lake. And Chris was an excellent swimmer, and I managed to keep up with her from time to time. So, uh, but that was a standard thing, swimming back and forth uh, across the lake. And so learning to swim for kids here was a, was a really big thing. When we first moved in, that what we now call the soccer field was a swamp. It was nothing but water. And the only reason it's, uh, it's solid now is because it took, we started dredging the lake. The lake's gone through, the lake in and around the beach has gone through at least four, three or four dredgings. And we took, initially we took the, uh, uh, muck from the lake and pumped it over to the soccer field to make it a landfill. And so we had, we could put baseball courts up, you know, baseball things up and also they play soccer there. Otherwise it was totally useless, but now it's a functioning, uh, functioning park area. The village was being run out of people's basements. There was no village office, there was no central location. We didn't have any control over the records. They were in Ronnie Metzel's basement. She was the village clerk. 
Uh, the police chief had all the police records. He wasn't even a resident of Tower Lakes. He lived in Wakanda. So I wanted to see if we could address that issue, which we ultimately did, and I won't bore you, you know the story, and we were able to, con with Mr. John Gillette's help, my fellow trustee, uh, we're able to convince Stephen Baird V to sell us the property on 59 for the princely sum of $175,000. And it really didn't cost the village that because I had found the working cash fund which had been created when the village was formed in 1966 and there was $144,000 in it which had never been used for anything. And so we ended up literally buying that property on 59 for $31,000. And the last thing I wanted to accomplish, as you know, um, was the water system issue. Um, Dorothy Pratt and Joyce Kale have been working for a long time to try and bring that issue to the forefront to get the Illinois EPA to come down on the private owners uh, through the Attorney General's office, which ultimately they did. Uh, but when we got together and talked about it, I reminded them that if there was a fine, it would go to Springfield. And if they imposed on the private owners the requirement that they upgrade the system by a million dollars, the owners would put the money into the system and then go to the Commerce Commission and ask for a 10% return on their money, which they would get. So we pay for it anyway. And so the community, uh, the board and the community supported the idea of buying that water system from the original owner, the uh, private owners who, as you know, did not care about how it was run. And uh, I think we did very well in getting that for the price we paid for it, which was $235,000. Uh, and then we, through three town meetings, and you remember all of this, I know, convinced the community to uh, allow the enactment of the SSA number two, which added $435 to everybody's real estate tax bill for 17 years. And with that money, we were able to drill a new well on the west side, down to the shallow aquifer, 277 feet. We were able to put in a new treatment facility with uh, chlorine, chlorine addition, iron sequestration, and fluoride, and storage, which we had never had. So we have two days of storage in case something bad goes, like the electricity goes out. And that's the three things I wanted to try and accomplish on the village board, and I'm proud to say we did accomplish them. I had a lot of help from trustees, uh, Rick Jansing in particular, Len Kuskowski, who succeeded me as village president, uh, John Gillette, Dave Perrell, um, and uh, others. And um, so I enjoyed my uh, time on the board for the most part. Um, I think we only had one major controversy, uh, and, uh, and I enjoyed living in Tower Lakes. I started as a village clerk under Bill Fitzpatrick. He left in 2000. Um, Len died in 2006. Brian Gidley, who was a trustee at the time, stepped in to be president pro tem for the remainder of Len's term and what was up for re-election in 2007, and Brian, um, you know, his business uh, wouldn't allow him the time to run. Uh, he had considered it, decided he didn't want to. In the meanwhile, I'd resigned as the village clerk a month or so before, and one night I was helping the new clerk get organized for a meeting, and, and Brian made this announcement that he couldn't you know, do it. He couldn't commit the time. And so all the other trustees are there checking their mail and they're like, well, Kathleen, then you should do it. And I'm like, oh my God. And so I talked to Mark and I'm like, you know, I, you know, people really want me to do this. And then we had, there was a cocktail party a month or so later and people are like, yeah, you should do it. So anyway, I ran, of course, unopposed because, you know, it's not really something that people jump to do, as I think Dave mentioned earlier. So I uh, won handily uh, <laughs> um, in 2007, and I was village president for eight years, two terms, and uh, I was the first female village president, first woman, and to stay the same. And so we, we were able to um, renew the very last act I 
did, the last ordinance I signed, um, was to um, renew a 20-year intergovernmental boundary agreement with all of our surrounding communities, including Wakanda, to protect our zoning and you know our boundaries and um, to help each other protect that because I think we need to stick together against uh, sometimes a county but often the state who doesn't really see life the way we do. You know I used to laugh when I go to a BACOG meetings and you know there, at one point they were trying to pass an ordinance um, or have each of the villages agree to pass an ordinance that would make parents liable for their kids you know having drinking parties in their house and I just laughed and I said that's not going to happen in Tower Lakes so you go ahead and do it Barrington that's not going to happen and they're like what do you mean don't you value and I said yeah it's just not going to happen so <laughs> next you know Uh, yeah, I was elected village president in uh, 2015, and uh, almost all the elections that I've been involved in have been uncontested. And I think that's because uh, uh, people realize it's a lot of work for uh, not a, not a huge reward. But the reward is all is all psychological. Seeing things get improved in your own neighborhood that's well worth the time, and that's why I keep doing it. We have a lot of exceptional things in this community. Um, safety, the variety of housing stock, um, the, the ecology, and so those are all priorities and, and we're making good progress and we have a fantastic team uh, working on every aspect, so just keeping that going is what's most important. And it's not easy, but it's important. Now, I, 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 you heard Sue's version, I'll tell you the, I'll tell you the truth, okay? Right. Okay, the deal was Sue and Joe had a party where we, we had a picnic on the island. We had to provide a conveyance for our uh, name picked out of a hat, and we went to the, and had the picnic at the party. Joe and Sue organized, and Sue did all the work. I mean, she did all the organizing, and she convinced, she did I hear a negative comment? No, you heard something she, coming from some other roar. She, <laughs> so she rigged it so I would be her partner. She thought she reset it up so I'd be her partner. She thought it'd be a lot more fun for her that way, okay? So anyway, so she set this up and we had to convey her, our part of the island. And people took canoes and decorated them all up and put fancy lighting up. It was kind of like, a, like, like, like the gondolas and, uh, in, in uh, Venice and so on. It was pretty cool, kind of nice. I set up a different system for Sue. Most of the guys went in rowboats or canoes. I was unfortunate enough to get John Gillette, and he got the longest ladder you could imagine, oh. imagine and put it here and to the island, and I had to crawl across and the, this ladder to with get there basket. with my picnic basket. And uh, I made it, and he got an excellent supper that he did not deserve. <laughs> As a young person, of course, we were young couple. We were impressed with the uh, with the parties. They uh, and, and one of the things they got going on were, were luau's, which which started shortly after we we got here. And uh, the fellow from whom we bought the the butterfly. Uh, when he and his wife went to the first luau up at uh, Bob and Joanne Swain's house, they didn't know what to wear. So they, uh, they took the drapes down. They had some flower print drapes in their living room and they took the drapes down and wrapped them around each other as a muumuu and went in their, their drapes as a muumuu. And there were always, there was a reasonable amount of drinking going on at the luau's. So, uh, we, 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 had, we had some good times. As Ray Spies said one time, he had been at a luau at our house, and uh, we got home, I drove him back to his house at about 3 or 3.30 in the morning and helped him get in the front door. But Ray was an inveterate golfer, and so he, he had to go play. He had, he had an 8 o'clock eight 
tee time for playing golf. And when he got up on the first tee, one of the fellows he was playing with came up to him and asked him to open his mouth, which he did, and he got sprayed with banaca. <laughs> so there were, there were some really good parties. Careless Cormier. The theme was that we came, whenever we had a dinner party, whoever had the dinner party had to come up with a topic for discussion. So there were many, many varied and different types of discussions that were had over the years. And those were great parties, okay? Um, we've had Halloween parties out here. Probably we've Fourth of July. Fourth of July. We, yeah, we fortunately were able to have the Fourth of July parties for many, many years and had them here. At, and, and they've always been great. And we used to have, we used to do our own fireworks. I volunteered therefore to uh, uh, shoot off the fireworks for the next seven or eight years. And the fireworks at the time were paid for by the, uh, uh, some money coming from TLIA, but a lot of the money came from the uh, bridge group. We played bridge and uh, collected a fee for playing bridge which traveled from, from house to house, and uh, that, uh, that paid for a chunk of the fireworks. I can remember uh, we tried to keep kids in, in canoes and boats from getting too close to where we were shooting off the fireworks. And we had a, a couple of boys that lived across the street that kept creeping in closer and closer, and then we finally had a short round that went off yeah, at which point you saw them rowing like crazy, <laughs> getting their boat out of the way. There are so many more young people here, which I think is just outstanding because it is, a, I mean, look at the things that go on here. Look at the 4th of July. For three days, it goes on, or even four. And uh, my brother worked for the New York Times for years, and he was here one 4th of July, and I said, you know, you ought to get that snotty newspaper of yours to come here and cover Tower Lakes on the 4th of July because it personifies everything that I think America should be. I mean, this is a community where there are more people in the parade than watching it. <laughs> people might miss Christmas in Tower Lakes, but nobody misses 4th of July. The um, rope, you know, tug of war the canoe races, I mean, all the stuff that happens, the amazing race that's sometimes run for 4th of July, it's just like, yeah. And what's so much fun about it is, you know, all ages participate. And that's something also I think that we all really value, that, you know, young kids know, you know, their older neighbors and, you know, the, the older kids of, you know, the people down the street. I mean, everybody knows who everybody is. And I, I think that's, uh, lost in a lot of communities. Um, you know, you might have it in a street or, you know, one little neighborhood, but it, as a whole community, I think it's pretty exceptional. And you know, one of the nice things, of course, about Tower Lakes, which I think everybody knows, is the fact that you don't really have to take a kid on a summer vacation when you live in Tower Lakes. In fact, you don't have to take them on any vacation at all, because even in the wintertime, they loved it. Our kids grew up, all grew up here. They swam here. They learned how to ice skate here, terrific hockey. We used to have a uh, toboggan slide across the lake, uh, which is no longer there. We had hockey boards and we kept the ice nice and clear with, with uh, clear water and that. So it was a great place for kids to stay. They never wanted to leave. I absolutely still feel I was so lucky to stumble into Tower Lakes 36 years ago. I just can't phrase it any other way. I look at all these young people, these young these young, I look kids going by the house on their bicycles and their uh, roller boards and oh man, I just, I, th I couldn't be happier. I just wish all my kids moved to the neighborhood. I can't imagine a better place to raise our kids. You know, they, they go off to college and, and describe where they live and what the community does. Like, this is going to make me tears to so cut this out. But um, people are like, where do you live? It's so unreal. And so they'd bring friends from home, or from school, back home. And, you know, they're like, yeah, got it. You know, it's pretty great. I would recommend anybody living in a community like Tower Lakes. I don't know of any community like Tower Lakes that exists. But if someone were looking for really a happy, wonderful place, this would be it.
lugar son tener a mí You still hide it up your sleeve You want for something you can't name Just a memory photograph